season of your life, if you really believe that you receive it for this year, for your life, there are going to be doors that are going to open that no man can shut. Amen? Amen. There's going to be doors that's going to shut that no man can open. There's going to be opportunities and access into different things in your life that you've never seen before. And you must prepare yourself. The whole thing is I'm not here to hype you up and give you some, some wish list of something that God's going to do without your participation. There's some things that's going to happen. There's going to be doors that's going to be that's gonna open in this world system that are going to give you the opportunity to go through, but they're going to be the wrong doors. See, every time God says something, there's always a counterfeit behind. See, I've never seen a counterfeit three dollar bill because there's never been a count uh, a genuine three dollar bill. So when God says there's going to be doors open, be mindful that somebody gonna open a door of opportunity for you and you find yourself wasting your time because there's going to be things that's going to be shaking in these last days that everything that is not on a firm foundation is going to surely fall. It's going to show for what it was built upon. And Jesus is our rock. Everything that we do this year is going to have to be through this open door. And I'm going to share with you, with you today about the open door. Say open door. Open door. Church, we got to get this because some of you don't even realize you, that Satan is, and I'm going to show you this in scripture, the thief is crouched at the door trying to take you out of here. And if you don't get this understanding that you have to go in by him, you're going to have to go into the right door. And then there will be access to, to other things. Doors of healing, doors of deliverance, doors of prosperity. All these different doors are all through Him. Most of us don't even realize that the things that we're, we're, we're fighting to get, we're fighting to obtain, or fighting to bring into our lives, these are the very things that God always had for you in the first place. So the enemy always gives you the sell out. He tries to make you get away from what God really has for you. So today, if you just follow along with me today, I believe it's going to open up your understanding. I believe you're going to get some revelation. They say revelation. revelation. You need God to unfold some things for you today. Amen. 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 I don't have to have a high power uh, service for the word to come. I just want y'all to know this. <laughs> Most of the time, I like it calm so you can hear it and listen to what God has to say. Sometimes we can get so loud and we get so noisy that we don't understand. It's a sweet spirit in here, whether you know it or not. Some of you are hurt, some of you are in pain, some of you are antagonized by the enemy, but today you're going to hear the word that's going to help you today. Amen? Amen. All right. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. I want to go to well, my foundational scripture comes out of Revelation 3. And it says, uh, it says this, that I'm opening up a door that no man can shut. He's talking to the church of Philadelphia. In Revelation uh, chapter 2 and 3 are the seven churches that Jesus addresses. And he gives revelation to each and every one of those churches. There were seven churches. Say seven churches. That's a perfect number. And every one of those churches, they was dealing with something. Every one of those churches was dealing with something. So even in a universal church, there are things that you want to deal with in different regions of, 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 of Christianity. You may be somewhere else in some, some churches in Africa may not be dealing with what we have to deal with here in America. But we're all dealing with something. So the seven churches in Asia that were addressed. But this church in Philadelphia was the church that God addressed. And he says, I'm, I'm opening a door that no man can shut. And he says, I have the keys of David. I'll teach on that later. I'm still, I'm still waiting on that because that's a whole teaching in itself. But I want you to understand the access that you're about to have. Amen? So let's look at this. Now, the reason I'm trying to get you ahead of time is because we're going to go into John 10 where Jesus says, I am the door. Say, I am the door. That's what Jesus said. Now, you and I are not the door. Jesus is the door. But I want to show you how when we come into this access, we go in and we go out and find pasture. I've already taught on it, but I'm just going to just show you the view so you'll understand. Let's read verse uh, 7. Then, Jesus, then said Jesus unto them again, Verily, verily, I say unto you, I am the door of the sheep. Now, uh, this is going to be very important. All that ever came before me are thieves and robbers. But the sheep did not hear them. Hear what Jesus I am the door. By me, if any man enter in, say enter in, he shall be saved. Everybody that came through the door of Jesus Christ, and you believe that Jesus died on the cross for you, you came into access into the kingdom of God. So you're at the door, you enter in. 
but it doesn't stop there. It says, and you shall go in and out. Say out. out. So we're going to go out, not in and back out. Not entrance and then exit, but into the door and out into the pasture. So this is where God began to show me about him being the door. Many of us are still at the entrance of the door, and we're so close to the world, we're so close to other opportunities, so many counterfeits that are coming and trying to make us, trying to hear different things, that God says it's time for you this year to go through the door and to go out into the past. That's where your manifestations are at. Amen? Come on, we gotta catch this now, because one of the things God was showing me was that there are so many opportunities that we have already addressed in our own lives, even my own self, as I was meditating on this this week. I said, man, God, I said, have I opened up, have I gone through some doors that I shouldn't have went through? And this is God showed me. He said, son, if you did, what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you how to exit out and go in through the right door. Hallelujah. That was so encouraging to me because a lot of times we think, if you, some of y'all are so far out in certain things, you're so far out, you went through the wrong door, and you're too far out. And God said, but I'm going to show you the exit in the way of escape. So you can go back to the right door. And now as you go out into the pasture, those very things that you desire are going to be there. See, Satan, Satan has got some of us so far out there. You know, went through doors and accesses. And when it got all the way, you started right here. It would have been simpler for you to go back out the door. But boy, what happens when you go way in out here? Invest in your time. Invest in your money. Invest in everything that you have done in your life. And now God said, you in the wrong door. And so that's how Satan gets us. He said, you don't want too far. You don't need this. You don't need this. But can I show someone what you're about you being? The, uh, the door to the door being the door to the sheep? If you a sheep, let me ask you a question. And I'm sure you will show you this by scripture. Go to Psalm 9-5 real quick, Sister Tasha. He said, we are the people of his pasture or the sheep of his hand. Meaning this, just like sheep are uh, with a shepherd, Jesus is our shepherd. David got that revelation as he was tending the sheep. He said, the Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. So let me share this with you. Have you I asked my wife this question this morning. Have you ever seen a sheep have to take care of the shepherd? A sheep doesn't go out and feed, feed the shepherd. A sheep can't do anything but watch this. Depend on the shepherd. Everything that she needs, protection, feeding, is guided by the shepherd. But so far along the line, we've been taught that the sheep got to do everything. Never know that we can go out into the green pasture, and if you uh, look up about shepherds, there can be 10 or 11 shepherds that are with hundreds of sheep, and they'll feed all in one pasture. And they'll go and they'll all mix up, but then each sheep know the voice of that shepherd. That shepherd say, boo, boo, boo. And all the sheep that know that voice, They'll stop what they're doing because they know the shepherd, they know their voice. And all of them, you can see thousands of them out there in the, out the herd. And what happened is, the ones that sit flop, he can walk with his staff, and they all start gathering. He said, my sheep hear my voice, and they follow me. And watch this, in the voice of a stranger, they will not follow. This is what God began to show me. How many strange voices have you heard? I had to look back over my life and said, how many voices have I heard of opportunity and doors that I went through? Then watch this. There was a strange voice that was not the voice of God. That's why it's so important that you and I must know the voice of God. Don't tell me you know the voice of God because you've been coming to church here all the time. If you're not in your, in your word daily, give us this day our daily bread, you can be deceived. Don't tell me. If you, if you don't eat for five days, you will be weak in the natural sense. If you don't eat the word of God on a daily basis, then why are you going to go on earth as it is in heaven? Because you don't know what's in heaven because you're not in the letter of heaven. you got to get in the word of God. That's why I tell people all the time, I say, listen, your daily prayer is your word, church. you got to get in the word of God. I should, and that's my job is to teach you what to get into. That's a big old Bible. That's a big old Bible. That's a lot of reading, especially the little letter thing. So I must show you what your new covenant reality is so you can get excited. See, I used to read, when I was in prison, I would read all through the Bible, and I didn't understand the, none of them, pretty much. I was just living off of just trusting God. But as I continue to go on, God began to reveal himself. He began to give me enlightenment and show me from the old covenant to the new covenant. 
love me. It got me excited, church. And then I started understanding about the righteousness of God, what I have a right to, and I can come blow into the throne of grace. I don't have to come over here and feel guilty if I made a mistake. I can come to the throne, not an altar. Say not an altar. Not an altar. You don't come to an altar no more. Otherwise, you just might tell you to go out there. You don't have an altar here no more. There's a throne of grace. That is not accurate, church. And I'm going to keep saying it until we get an understanding of that. I don't care how religious you want to keep it in you. We are not going to be taught that this is an altar. This is called the throne of grace. Amen? Where you can obtain mercy. Say mercy. And not get what you do deserve in the fine grace to help you in the time of need. You know why? Because every one of us needed from the pulpit to the door. The problem has been we looked in the pulpit and thought everybody was perfect. Anybody was ministering, they supposed to be perfect. And then you look and then you fall because your trust was in the wrong shot. And I'm telling you the truth, church, we've got to get to this point where we understand that this is, this is, I want y'all to get this. There are going to be other voices. I don't care if it's coming from me, if it's not an accuracy of God's new covenant reality. Don't you, you listen to the great shepherd. Amen? Amen? Amen. 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 Give that the example. The church of that goes. Go to Revelation 3 if you want to, but I'll stop. This church had went through a door. And they had everything they need financially. They had everything they, they thought they had everything going on. But what happened was when God corrected them out of love, he said, I, I love, I chastise those who I love. So sometimes you, people, your kids don't understand, or even the sheep you don't understand that the rod is for correction to get you back in a correct uh, a posture or get you back with the flock. But sometimes we don't like correction. We like to be always be right, you know. That's how I feel about it. You know, that's my opinion about it. No, 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 no. There is a truth and there is a lie. Amen? Amen. You don't either believe, believe the truth or a lie. So look what happens. They got all this going on. Let's read it real quick. I'm gonna show y'all something. Because these people had already went through the door. See, if you're part of the church, you don't went through the door. The problem is they went out in the wrong doors. They went out to got access to it. They had all the money they wanted, didn't have need of nothing, they got everything. And look what God called them. Let's go. See, we're going to the right door this year. We're going to enter into this door. Because some of you need rest. You're going to find out that the Lord is your shepherd and you shall not lack. He's going to make you lie down in green pastures. He's going to make you lie down. He's going to make you rest. Some of you can't even rest because it's too busy. Just too busy. And you think it's God. But I'm here, I'm here to correct that today. In Jesus' name. And put you back on the right track with me. Because God corrected me past it too. And showed me areas in my life. Can I be honest with you? So we don't sit up here and, 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 and come up and act like ain't nothing wrong with the past. No, the pastor got stuff he got to deal with on a daily basis. Amen? Amen. Amen. Oh, wow. <laughs> come on, church. We got to wake up to this now. That's, that's the problem. Is, that's why we can't confess our faults one to another. So that we can pray for one another for healing. Because everybody want to hide. Everybody want to put on that. I'm okay. No, you ain't. No, you ain't. You ready to go get a loaf of bread? Yep, come on. No, you not. You not. You, come on, Chuck. You got to get the man some. You know you ready to cuss out everybody at the job. You ready to go off on everybody. The head thoughts and get their pistols with you. Now, come on, Chuck. We, we got to be honest with ourselves. Go up to the uh, uh, all the way up to verse, uh, I think I'm going to say 17, 16 or 17. Let's look at this. Let's look at this, this church here. They had went through the door. Say through the door. Go down and say, uh, go up. I'm sorry, I said talk. Not up, that's way. Yeah, keep on, keep on. There you go. And until the angel of the church of Landosians, right, these things said the amen, the faithful and true witness, the beginning of the creation of God. Watch this. I know your works, that you are neither cold or hot. I would you were either cold or hot. So then, because you are lukewarm and neither cold nor hot, I will spew you out of my mouth. Why? Because you say, I am rich and I've increased with goods and I have need of nothing. And no, it's not. Look at what God says. That you are wretched, you miserable, you poor, you blind, and naked. Now, watch what he says. I counsel thee to buy me gold tried bread. That thou mayest be rich and white raiment, that thou mayest be clothed, and that the, the and that the shame of thy nakedness do not appear. And anoint thy eyes with eyesalve, that you may see. Now let me see. He said, I'm telling you this because I love you. 
He said, I'm rebuking you because I love you. All strength is for doctrine, reproof, correction, rebuke, for instruction in righteousness. If you can't receive correction, reproof, and instruction, and, uh, inst uh, correction, rebuke, and uh, instruction, I mean, correction, rebuke, and chastisement, you can't walk into the instructions that God gives you. Amen? Amen? All right, here we go. As many as I know that I rebuke and chastise, be zealous, therefore, and do what? Amen. Look what God tell them. This is the year to open the door. He said, you don't walk through the door, the wrong door. You, you might be my child, bro. But you went through the wrong door because the enemy just what he does. And he took you way out there. But I'm going to come out and find you today. And I'm going to knock on the door of your heart. I want to knock on your heart and say, can I come in? If you open the door of your heart today, God said, we're going to feast together. We're going to feed. We're going to get back into the pasture. And I'm going to give you what you need. That's a word for somebody today. Now, I'm going to read this out the New Living Translation. Look what it says in the New Living Translation. This is the last part. All we are. All right. Uh, verse 20, Sister Verse 20. Now, put it in TPT. TPT. It might be the TPT. Sorry about that. TPT. I ain't gonna be before you long. Verse 20. God forgive us somewhere. Thank you, Lord. Here it is. 20. Behold, I'm standing at the door knocking. If your heart is open, say my heart is open. Come on, say it again. My heart is open to hear your voice. My heart is open to hear your voice today, Lord. I'm knocking. God say, listen, I have when we go through doors of opportunity, some of us have gotten so far out that you didn't even realize that you're so far out that God today is saying, I'm coming and knock on the door of your heart. Your heart that got stiff in some areas you don't even realize it. Wow. Your heart that got so hardened. You know what a hard heart is? A hard heart is a hard head. That's what, the heart is always described, most of the time in the Bible, is described as the mind, will, and emotions. Hard hearted means hard headedness. You can hear a word from God, and you can leave right out of here and never even try to act on what God is saying. saying. That's called hard-heartedness. You know how you tell your child, boy, you better quit being hard-headed now. Quit being hard-headed. That means I've told you this over and over, and you still won't move on. So today, look what God said. I'm knocking at the door of your heart. If you hear my voice, and if you open the door again, what are you going to do, y'all? He's going to come in to you and do what? And you're going to feast with me. Right. You back into the pasture that fast. Right. You never lost a step. Come on, that's, that's the grace of God. God is saying today, I'm coming where you at today. I'm knocking on the door of your heart today. Because you done came through the door. But you, watch this, you came through the door and Satan gave you a different opportunity. And you don't ran so far out. And you know you're so far out there. But you will not come back. And it's, I'm giving you a way out today, says the Lord. I'm giving you a way to exit out and come back the right way through the door. When you come through this door, I promise you, see the Lord, every other opportunity is through that door. There are so many things in the pastures of God. God wants you to lay down. Look at Psalms 23. Watch this. Now I'm going to show you what God was showing you today. David got this revelation. He said, the Lord is my shepherd. I'm not going to lack in no area. I don't know why he's not going to lack in no area. You know why? He makes him to lie down in the green pastures. When you're going out into what God has given you, watch this. It's already prepared for you. It's already done. Say it's already done. Already. See, resting to lie down means to rest. That's the rest, restful uh, mode. When you in rest, what you're saying is, I believe what God has already did through his son, Jesus Christ. Everything that he did, he got on that cross and he said,
and Adam failed. And the Bible tells me Jesus came to bring us back to that glorious state. So now today, you didn't deserve it, just like we didn't deserve to be put on as sinners for what Adam did. We had to take on a sinnership because of what Adam did. So when Jesus came, why don't you take on his righteousness, church? Amen. What's so hard about saying, I'm right with God? Even when you make making mistakes. Yes. <coughs> Who do you think you ought to act like you don't have no problem? To him that said he has no sin in him, you are already missing the Lord. Every day we got bad thoughts. We got things that go through our mind. Some of you greedy. Some of you got all kinds of stuff running through your mind. Some of you just don't spend time with God. But you better understand you got a right standing with God. If you don't understand your righteousness, you know what the enemy will do? He'll condemn you. And he'll say, look at you. You ain't, no, uh, don't fight what you go to church for. You messed up. Tore from, from. That's what we post me in. It's the hospital. That's why I come there. I can't even just preach a word. They just stay out to three in the morning. Y'all already out there. That's what the devil tell you. Already out there anyway. You know, do it, do it good. Do it right. <laughs> That's why I used to do. You know, the street lights beat me. I was like, man, since we come up at eleven on one, I'm coming home about five. I was gonna get the same whooping anyway. The only difference is you not get the whooping there. Yeah. Who told you that? Who told you God is mad at you? Come on, church. I'm trying to know that. He said, I have more out there. I was afraid, so I hit. Who told you you was afraid of that? Who told you that? Who told you God mad at you today? But I'm here to convince you today that if you go through this door, come on, church, if you go through this door, God is going to take you out into green pastures, and he's going to cause you to lie down. Say lie down. Lie down. Green, he's going to make you lie down in green pastures. To lie down means to rest. Say rest. You need rest for your soul. See, Jesus didn't say, come up to me all you that labor. How many of you are laboring in, in your life? Amen. I still don't know his name. How many of you labor in your mind sometimes? Amen. Just think about how it's going to get done. How I'm going to do this. How I'm going to do this. Uh, labor, heavy labor. It, 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 bur it burns you down. This is what Jesus said. Come up to me all you that labor, heavy labor, and I'll give you money. Rest. Oh, no. That's what he said. No, I'll give you healing. All of the rest that he gives you, healing, money, family coming together, is all until you rest it. What is resting? This is what resting is. Don't y'all miss this. Resting is, watch this, being still and in faith knowing that what God had already done from the beginning, he had already prepared it for you. So you're resting in a finished work. God knew you before you was in your mother's womb. He knew the plans that he had for you. He knew what you were supposed to be. So he knew your end from your beginning. If you trust that God did not bring you here purposely, un unpurposeful, and just brought you in here just to eat and drink and get a big house and a car and die, what kind of God is that? What kind of God will put you in the earth with all the, the wisdom of this world? And you look up into the sky, he said, that's why you're not going to have an excuse. 
You look and see how he built everything. And you mean to tell me that he brought you here just to sit up here and be a drunk or a flunky or sit around and complain because you're in the wrong country. Whatever it may be. God said, you really think I'm that shallow man? And yet the enemy been telling you all this time to keep eating and drinking and working until you die. Mm -hmm. Go to church if you feel like it. Wow. Making this, may watch this, making this as if you gotta be here. No, you you get to be here. Meaning this, once you understand how good he's been to you and how much he really loves you, you ain't gonna have no choice but to run up into this thing and say, Lord, you come into my you just run into the temple because you know I'm only here that brought you this far. Amen. Quiet water. He restores what? 
soul. See, we think we restore our soul. Part of your job is to do this now. When you come unto Jesus, he gives you rest. But this is what he says. When you come unto me, I give you rest. Your rest is for your spirit, man. It's everything about you right now, if you're a Christian today, you have rest on the inside. The problem is, you must take his yoke upon you and begin to learn Amen. of him. Yeah, that's right. The problem is, we haven't taken his yoke upon us. You know what a yoke is, don't you? Have you ever seen a yoke of oxen? Whichever one is strongest on that yoke is where you're going to get pulled to. And God is Jesus is saying, take my yoke upon you and watch this. Learn of me. You know what happened when you learn of him? Just like Peter. When he said, thou art the Christ, he said that was revealed to you. See, in your learning, you get revelation. In your learning, you get revelation. When he revealed that to him, he told him who he was. He said, your name is no more Simon, but John. Your name is Rock Peter. Thou art Peter, and upon this rock I build my church. Some of you don't even know your identity because, watch this, because you don't know who he is. You can't find your identity in your country. You can't find your identity through your ancestors. You can find so much, but you cannot find who you are all the way to Adam. You need to find out who you are in Christ. Amen? Amen. Come on, church. When you find out who he is, he's going to show you who you are. That's part of restoring your mind, will, and emotion. Bringing it back to that place of the garden where you understand your authority. Amen? Amen? Some of you got to take your authority. I'm telling you, it's not going to be easy this year. There are going to be open doors of opportunity in the wrong way. So you got to know what's counterfeit. So when you go through this door with Jesus, you're going to have to understand it. By me, as you enter in, you shall be saved. Anybody know what the definition of saved is? Come on, just say it out loud. Prosperity. Prosperity, whatever. Healing. See, I always thought I'm saved when I'm just going to heaven. Now I'm going to show you all got to learn this stuff. Salvation means healing, deliverance, wholeness, rescue. I thought when I was saved, I was just getting ready to go to heaven. No. Salvation entails all these other things that you and I miss out on earth. And he told me on earth as it is in heaven. Stay down and be with you. 
He said, because I know it's, I know it's far better there. He got a revelation. He said, it's far better to be with Christ, but I know right now it's necessary that I be down with you and here with you, so I ain't going nowhere. Do you have confidence to know that you got a purpose in life? That you know the enemy can't take you out? Okay, you might get in a car accident. Okay, you might break a leg. Okay, a disease might get your body. But I ain't going nowhere. Amen. I got something to do. I'm beneficial to the kingdom. Yes. Do you know you're beneficial to the kingdom? Yes. Come on, child. Do you know you're beneficial to the kingdom? Yes. You got to know this. That's why I'm getting excited about the young people so I can get them excited about kingdom work. So you know that you're beneficial to kingdom business. Amen? Because if you start seeking from the kingdom and his righteousness, his right way of doing things, instead of people telling you, seek the kingdom and do it this way. No, no, no. There's a righteousness that comes with that. Then those things will be added unto you. Amen? Amen. 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 Give God your praise. Valley of shadow. Yeah, it's just a shadow. It's just because of Jesus, it's just a shadow. <laughs> shadow ain't even jumped before. Have you ever jumped out of shadow? Ooh, whoa. <laughs> but when you find out it's a shadow, what you do? Oh man, I'm good. I'm talking to somebody for real. <laughs> the truth of the matter is a shadow ain't never hurt nobody. Don't let you think, don't, don't you ever think that the devil can take your life. When you know, watch this. Jesus said, no man can take my life. I lay it down. You got that same authority that you can choose to lay down your life. Meaning this, when you're tired and your body done got worn out, you can give up the ghost. Oh, Pastor, you wrong for that. Yeah, y'all better catch this now. That's why people die, die before their time. The Bible says, precious in the sight of the Lord is what? The death of, the death of his saints. You know what we say? You know what that means? Y'all know what that means? When something is precious, that means it costs something. We thought he was saying like, precious in the sight of the Lord. This is how we do Jesus anyway. Precious in the sight of the Lord is the death of his son. No, he said it cost me something. Yes. Yes. It's yes. precious, man. Amen. That man's life was precious. It cost me something. I died for him that he may live. Yeah. And again, he stole. He had to go through the door. If you stay right there at the door, that's an enemy. That's what the Bible says in John 10. Go on. Real quick. Go back to 23 says, like, I don't want you to miss this. Look at the next verse on this, y'all. So y'all, verse 10 and 9. I'm going to read it. I don't want y'all to miss this. I want y'all to say, say context. Stay in context when you read the Bible. Stay in context. If you take, watch this, if you take the, uh, the con out of text, if you take uh, the con out of text, it's all you do. If you take the text out of context, you got a con. Amen? You being tricked. So stay in context. Watch this. I am the door. By me, if any man can train, he shall be saved. He shall go in and out and find passion. Look at the next verse. Look at the next verse. The thief. Now we quote that all the time. The thief coming not but for to do what? Why did Jesus say he came? Your shepherd, you're gonna fall in there. Watch this. When that fall come, 
great gonna be the fall. I am the good shepherd. Oh, now you go ahead back to that sister. I just want them to see that the thief, right after he said I am the door, there's someone crouched at the door. The thief. He wants to, he wants to give you a different door of opportunity so he can steal from you. He wants to kill you in the midst of that, and he wants to destroy your destiny. His whole job is to give you a different door of opportunity so that you don't go and say, God, I'm acknowledge you about this. Lord, I, I know I'm afraid. I don't know what I'm going to do. If you say, if you say I went through the wrong door, what I'm going to do, Lord, that, that's your very hope where God can guide you into the truth about your life. Amen? Amen. All right. I will fear no evil, for thou art what? Thou rod and I staff, they do what? The rod is supposed to comfort you. This word that you get in the day might seem like a hard word, but it should comfort you. If you really believe that God, listen, if you really believe that he is the door, and you have already went in, and you attempted to go out into the pasture, this ought to comfort you. Amen? All right. Now, prepare us a table before we were at. Where at? Where are you going to bring your table at? And who's friends? This year, you're going to see God prepare that your table has already been set for you. <laughs> it's good news, sir. Some of you realize your table will be already set for you. Everything is ready for you. God said, all I need you to do is acknowledge that I've set the table for you and I've prepared everything while everybody laughing at you and saying, you never going to be nothing. Saying, look at her, you done did this, you done lost this, you done lost this, and you done did this, and look at you. And God said, I prepare a table before you. God said, I prepare a table before you. Amen? Yeah. Come on, church, I'm on the speech and something. God said, I prepare a table before you. Okay. Amen? I prepare a table before you. Yeah. You know what that means? That means, I don't care what you've done, I've set up a table before you. Yeah. In the presence of your will. Because yeah. he tried to kill you. Right, tried to steal from you. He tried to destroy your life. But I'm your shepherd, said the Lord. All I want you to do is be able to hear my voice. So that watch this, so you'll know not the voice of a stranger. You'll be able to follow what I'm showing you in these last days. In 2024, you're going to have to know my voice. And you're going to have to follow me, amen? amen. You're going to follow me. Follow me don't mean just being obedient, because that's what you righteousness to God for. Follow means this. Follow means that I don't know what to do without you. So when, you, when I hear your voice, I'm getting, out, I'm getting out of the sheepfold and I'm going over there. Whoever else with me, we part of that flock. Amen? Amen. And we're going to go with his voice. Amen? Amen. All right. Give God a hand for it. I know it's small, but it's real. I love this boy. He ain't just going to sit you at the table. He will anoint you. He will anoint you. He anoints my head with what? My cup does what? Why do you think your cup go over? So it can be to somebody else. He gonna give you more than enough for yourself, sir. If you just let God anoint you, I promise you there'll be an overflow of that anointing for somebody else. The greatest part of your life when God's using you, uh, whatever gift you have, is to let your anointing overflow. When you start seeing people affected by what God has called you to do, that's why I get excited, church. Because when the anointing overflows, I can see the flow. Amen? Church, you've got to let God do that. If not, you know what it'll be? It'll be church as usual. We'll be coming to church and think of giving God. Watch this. We think we did our, our, our Christian duty only to find yourself going through hell every day. God is saying you have to go through the door and go out into the pasture. All right. Surely. Say surely. Sure. Say it's a sure thing. Sure. Say it's guaranteed.
Hallelujah. We got to go through this door, church. We got to go through this open door. God is giving you access today. Hallelujah. I'm praying over you because there are some of you that have not had rest. And what God was showing you was that secretly, things you cannot see, He's attacking you out of your uneasiness. Wherever you're uneasy at, you got to be careful because that's where disease tries to creep in. That's where you get the word dis-ease, uneasy. And we've been thinking, oh, you know what? And we don't realize that most of your heart diseases and everything else is stress related. Now I know it is. Stress and anxiety related. Most of the things that have attacked us is because of the things that we're stressed out about. And if you don't get that stress out of your life and learn how to rest in the finished works of God and understand that God will be too much for you to fall in this season of your life because there's some things, some things about to happen. And if you if you depend on your job, if you depend on your finances, if you depend on any of these things, I'm telling you today, get your trust out of it and trust God. Amen? Amen. You're going to be okay. Don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. God was supernaturally, just like he did with the children of Israel. Don't you worry about a thing. With this, everything that the enemy tried to take from you, just like the children of Israel went out of Egypt, he brought them out rich. Y'all better catch this. And they never had to see that enemy, never again. And he brought them out miraculous. Say miraculous. Some of you will see a Red Sea experience. Some things will be part for you to walk through. Hallelujah. Time off of labor is so hard. And work is so hard and trying to make ends meet. Only to find out they ain't me. It ain't gonna work. You're wasting your time. Now you have Pastor Cooper for telling you you don't have to go around this mountain. But you keep going around this mountain. Now I ain't gonna go around this time because I remember this right there. I ain't going. That's my benchmark. I know it. I'm gonna go this way this time. So you know I ain't even worried about it. I'm not worried about it. Pastor, I'm gonna be alright. I'm gonna be alright. I'm gonna be all right. go this way. Only find yourself going right back down through here. how we live our lives, church. Right back around. After so long, you used to be so tired. You got so far out. You don't even care no more. That's why it's going to be a great falling away. Some that you may see this year, you may not see next year. Because they're going to fall away. They're going to get tired. Church, you better wake up. You better wake up this year. There ain't going to be no access where you're going to feel like, I can come to church and I'll be all right. You don't want to come to church because, watch this, it's going to, the enemy going to attack so bad. And the Bible tells us there's going to be a great falling away. We got to wake up. Don't think we don't have the potential to fall away. I'll never get to this point. I'm so proud for that. I said, no, but I know this. I'm going to keep my eyes on him. I'm going through the right doors. Amen? Amen? I don't want to go back and start smoking that hoover. I don't. <laughs> y'all ain't going to like me if I start smoking that crack. <laughs> Come on, I, I ain't saying no, I'm not saying the gospel of Christ. It was the power of God that saved me. He brought me up out of here. Amen? Amen. Y'all would like to pass the cook that y'all would have saw 35 years ago. Thank God I did that man no more. Amen? Amen. Amen. And so you probably said the same thing, amen? You don't want to see this girl. You don't want to see this girl. You don't want to see this girl. So thank God I know God has brought you a mighty long way. But don't be so proud that you did because you come to church and you pay your tax and you sing in the choir and you come up here and preach and teach that you ain't exempt from falling away. You better fruit. Bible asks you first. Hebrews 4, I'm going to read that last. Like Hebrews 4, I want y'all to see what the only thing you should be fearing. This is the only thing God tells you to fear. He say, you better fear lest you come short of entering into my rest. If you ain't afraid of not entering into my rest, you're going through the wrong door. You got it. The entrance door to Christ is rest. Come unto me, all you that labor. I am the door. Come unto me, all you that labor. I'll give you rest. If you don't enter into Christ and don't enter into that rest, you better be afraid. You know what? I'm finna back up. It's okay. I'm finna back up. 
I need rest. I'm gonna rest in this thing, amen? I'm gonna rest in watch this. I'm gonna rest in the finish, finish works of Christ. I am not gonna worry about how God will take care of this. Sometimes some of you need a miracle anyway. Some of you need to stop what you're doing and just wait on God and watch the miracle come. God will not fail you. Sometimes you just gotta stop and say, I can do nothing until God show up. Yes. I've done that before. We and the boy had to do it. We could go over three thousand dollars fifteen years ago. And they said they wanted it then. They wanted it right then. They gave us a deadline. And we just laughed. We said, what are they gonna do? Beat us up? We ain't got it. The Lord will trust you. And somebody sued her company. Y'all ever yeah, catch this? On the day that we owed them, somebody sued her company. And a $3,000, did a $3,000 just show up? Man, they're humping I'm telling you, God has been showing himself so strong over the years of our life that it might be a fool without God. That was strength on the last break that we needed something, and God would always show up. We didn't know what we were going to do. We, I'm going to see, I'm going to rob nobody no more. That's for sure. I just trusted God. And God always showed up. Let me ask you. Have you ever gave me that opportunity? Have you ever came to the brink of your red sea and complained and grumbled, but just waited on God and said, God, I don't know if I'm either they're going to kill me or I'm going to drown. Have you allowed him to open up the red sea for your life? If you haven't, you're missing out on the greatest opportunity to enter into his rest. Some of you just need a, 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 a great work from God so it kind of builds you up. And God was ready to watch this. To show his goodness and mercy towards you. Amen. You don't deserve it, but he wants to show his mercy towards you today. Amen. Amen. How many ready for some doors to open? Amen. Amen. So last part, the three to the TPT, I'm done. You can play a little music. You heard my brother. Oh, okay. Amen. Verse one. Quick. There we go. Thank you. Yahweh is my best friend and my shepherd. I always have more than enough. He offers a resting place for me in his luxurious love. He tracks, his tracks take me to an oasis of peace near the quiet brook of bliss. That's where he restores and revives my life. He opens before me the right path and leads me along in his footsteps of righteousness so that I can bring honor to his name. Even when your path takes me through the valley of deepest darkness, fear will never conquer me, for you already have. <laughs> Your authority is my strength and my peace. The comfort of your love takes away my fear. I'll never be lonely, for you are near. You become my delicious feast, even when my enemies dare to fight. You anoint me with the fragrance of your Holy Spirit. You give me all I can drink of you until my cup overflows. So why would I fear the future? Only goodness and tender love pursue me all the days of my life. Then afterwards, when my life is through, I return to your glorious presence to be forever with you. Everybody stand. Father, I thank you today. Hallelujah. I give you praise and honor for your word today. I thank you that the door is wide open for every one of us today to walk through and to go out into the pastures. So I say today, if you know that you are if you say you accept that Jesus Christ is Lord and your Savior, you have already come through the door. But I challenge you today, if you know you've been out through doors that you may not realize that God's about to reveal to you, that he's going to exit that door so you can go through the right, proper door to go out into the vastness of God, would you come up today? Because God is going to take you out into some great blessings in your life. Amen? If that's you, come on, come on in, because he's bringing you in and bringing you out into some things. Amen? Come on now. Amen. 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 Thank you, Jesus. Look, we don't need music for this. God, that's a sound in this place. I can hear it. I can, I'm serious. I can hear the sound. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. God is bringing you in and out. Some of you have been going through doors and you're so far out that you're afraid. If, if you've got fear on you right now, and, you, and, and, and fear ain't always like you're you terrified, but it's like, I don't know what else to do. This is all I got. If I step out, what am I having to lean on? Did you come today? If enemy's trying to attack you, but fear to come on up. Come on up. 